Did you think that I forgot about Doctor Who and finishing up all of the stuff so I could talk about the new specials that came out? I did not. I'm here to talk about Doctor Who, Eve of the Daleks. Yep, that's what's up next. And oh boy, it was a thing that I watched and part of it's fun. I don't know. This is honestly for me, I think where the 13th Doctor's time is really coming to an end and where I'm just kind of like, I felt myself pushing through it. It was becoming a bit of a slog. I, this episode, though, I still did enjoy this special. So let's talk about that. Also, this is where Doctor Who gets a little weird because of the pandemic. They basically decided to do, like, three specials. They were just going to basically, like, leave it, I think, with Flux. Like, Jody was going to leave, and then they, they decided they were just going to do... And then this was going to be the last season, and they decided they were just going to do three specials. And so they went all out with these three specials, which... There are pluses and minuses to that, but we'll talk about that as we go through. Eve of the Daleks. What's it about? Well, on New Year's Eve, the Doctor, Yaz, and Dan basically get stuck in a time loop in a uh, storage facility where people go to store their belongings. Um, they get stuck in this time loop with some Daleks that are there and also some civilians who are also at the storage facility on New Year's Eve. They each have their own feelings. They're going through their own stuff in regards to one another and in regards to this holiday. And yeah, it's just a fun way to kind of explore some of these characters under the time crunch of having to face these Daleks and face death because what happens is the time loop resets every time basically the doctor and Yaz and Dan, they, a lot of them, they, a lot of the times they die <laughs> and Sarah and um, uh, Nick, who are the other civilian characters that we meet in this special. So the Daleks kill them and then a time loop starts again and they remember everything and they have to go through. So I think because we have that feeling of like imminent death and the idea that the time loops keep getting shorter, so there's this race against time. Always fun, I think, for a Time Lord as a concept. It is a, a, a special that really digs up, I think, a lot of personal feelings for a lot of the characters here. And to me, that was one of the strongest things about this special. Overall, I enjoyed it, especially, like I said, the inclusion of these two other characters who are kind of just living their lives and then they have their own problems to deal with and they get pulled into this. And we also get to explore some of their characterization and their problems and it just helps to ground the episode, I think. And the fact that, you know, the interpersonal relationships become the focus because of this time crunch is, I think, really, really fun. Now. What I don't love about it is I don't love Daleks being here. Overall, I just feel like we've done Daleks too much with the 13th Doctor. And I understand that, you know, there's kind of a theme that they're that they're doing here that Chris Chibnall seems to be doing with the Daleks, which is, you know, we had we had the Daleks in Resolution and then Revolution of the Daleks. And now we're at Eve of the Daleks. And I would say even to an extent in the Flux finale, the Daleks are also kind of present there in the Vanquishers episode. So I understand the Daleks are kind of just this like recurring thing that are coming back. And obviously they come back a lot through Doctor Who. So why does this bother me? I had to think about this a little bit. And I just feel like we're not doing anything new maybe is my issue. Like it's the Daleks coming in. But it's almost like as soon as we defeat them, they just show up at the next finale and it becomes kind of too samey and too predictable. And the Daleks then lose a bit of their like vim and verb because they're just showing up all the time. Overall, I feel like other than Flux, like I just haven't seen a lot of creatures and a lot of like other beings, other villains that are unique you know, to the 13th Doctor. And that's why I think just having the Daleks here so much just doesn't serve the show as much and gets kind of a little bit boring. Now, what we do have to keep this episode exciting, like I said, is the time loop. And I found that was cool. And, you know, Sarah and Nick, these other characters and how they come in and interact with each other and interact with the Doctor. And we do also deal with um, some stuff between the companions and the Doctor, where Dan kind of broaches this topic of noticing that Yaz has feelings for the Doctor. And he thinks that the Doctor is aware of this, and he's wondering why 
nothing is being done and he's just like this third person in the room being like uh are we gonna talk about this or uh so I liked him approaching that subject and I was really hopeful because obviously I was like I knew it I felt the love between Yaz and the doctor I was so excited about it and then I watched this episode and I was like oh man so we're, we've talked about it in the special so we're probably gonna address it and I'm really psyched to see where it goes I'm saying this now though after having watched what comes next. I won't talk about that here in case you haven't seen it, but if you have seen it, I think you know what I'm thinking in this moment, uh, but I digress. Um, I just like the premise of the danger here and the idea that they only have so many loops to try and solve this problem and escape these Daleks. Like I said, I think that's really the strength of the episode and it pushes people to connect with one another. But once again, the resolution here and I think this is an issue I have with a lot of the later stuff, especially with the 13th Doctor, is it doesn't feel super memorable or super smart. It isn't something that I, I inherently remember. It's something that I had to summon from my brain when I was thinking back to this episode and kind of writing some of my notes because I, I watched this episode a while ago now. Basically what they do to solve it is they use um, Sarah's cell phone, her mobile, to distract the Daleks, basically getting the Daleks to shoot a pile of fireworks that they've put together where one of Sarah's co-workers, um, she owns the facility and she has this guy that was storing all this stuff there and she kept trying to tell him like, you can't store all this stuff here and dangerous stuff like fireworks. So they use that to destroy the building and in destroying the building, it allows them to basically free themselves from the time loop and the TARDIS and get away to safety. I mean, the building's destroyed, but they're fine. And all the Daleks are defeated. But it's just not, like, super clever, I guess. It's just not, like, an exciting bit that you could tell a friend. And be like, oh, and then this happened and it was insane. And you wouldn't believe how the Doctor solved it. In fact, it just seems kind of basic. And so that's something that I also was like, eh, eh, it's just kind of like, there's parts of it that are really fun, and then there's parts of it that, for me, were just like, eh, it's just okay. But we're not done yet. We have two more specials to talk about. And then I will be talking about the new Doctor Who stuff that we got. And I'm really excited about it. I'm really excited about the new direction for Doctor Who and kind of where it's going to be going. And the ending, as we near the end of the 13th Doctor, it's very bittersweet to me because I really did love that first season with Jodie Whittaker a lot. And I did really enjoy Flux, which we just came out of. And then this was like the first thing I watched after Flux. And I was like, well, it's just the start. But we only have three episodes. So three specials so all right that's it for this one i'll see you guys next time to talk about some more doctor who next wednesday thank you so much for watching thank you so much for watching and until next time friends stay nerdy and stay timey-wimey wibbly wobbly timey-wimey